Hello everybody and welcome back to the second video in the Winner in a Week sub-series on bet types, moves, and pop manipulation. My name is Dylan and in this video we'll be looking primarily at pop manipulation strategies for both pre-flop and post-flop play. We'll take a look at bet sizing for pot limit games and this will be especially important for you future pot limit Omaha players out there and also gives you a good understanding in general of pot odds as such and the odds that you're given your respective opponent or opponents both pre-flop and post-flop. We'll look at quite a few tables that I've created for you guys that show you the probability of hitting a playable or profitable flop. We'll also take a look at especially c-betting on the flop and go into pot odds analyses both for 2-bet and 3-bet pots where you're the c-better yourself or someone c-betting into you. And finally I think we'll take a look at an expected value calculator for pushes on both the flop and the turn and the respective equity you need and also fold equity to make certain moves that you may or may not be aware of. But before we get there I want to briefly review what we saw in the first video and as stated before, a one bet in online poker terms is of course just posting the big blind. A two bet is the first raise pre-flop and the general rule that we gave you guys for that is in concerning bet sizing always four times the big blind plus one per limper. Three betting is in a re-raise pre-flop and that again is then three times the open raise plus one per cold caller and 4-betting and 5-betting, of course, is then the re-raise, a re-re-raise and re-re-re-raise. And here we gave as a general tip 2.5 to 3.5 times the 3-bet amount, plus 1 per 3-bet caller, if that is your case. And as always, never forget the principle that any time, any given move, a call, a bet, or a raise will commit more than half of your stack. It's no longer, in most cases, uh, a scenario where you're considering a simple call bet or or raise you're considering either pushing or folding always have that in your mind uh, it's very very important you never want to just make a bet that's gonna cut you in half only to fold on the following street that's just really bad play in general so if it's good enough to call if it's good enough to bet and it's gonna commit half your stack sometimes in some scenarios as we mentioned in the first video even a third of your stack go ahead and push get fold equity on your side and make that strong move in that very street like I said you don't want to be in a situation where you make a move whatever call bet or raise only to let the hand go in the following street or following two streets we also looked at yeah of course limping um, being aware of players limp call limp raise stats isolation raises um, both for limpers and open raises. We looked at cold calling, of course, just calling somebody's two bet, so called flat calling or calling open. We looked at squeezing, very, very important topic. Basically, one open raiser, one cold caller, and you three bet, i.e., squeeze. Uh, we talked about maintaining initiative, keeping initiative on your side. And then, yeah, of course, we looked at the different pot odds analyses, bet sizing calculators, etc. Lines of play post flop, especially balancing deception, um, donk bets, basically leading into a pot when you weren't the last pre flop aggressor. We looked at uh, bluffs post flop, also long ball bluffs. We looked at semi bluffs, where you have a lot of equity in your hand, but you don't have a made hand, and you make a better raise. We looked at floating in quite yeah, okay, not great detail, but we looked at floating in general. And we also look at block uh, block bets. Basically betting again, especially on the river, a third or half pot, in order not to be bluffed off your hand. That very often happens, of course, out of position. That should be very clear to all of you at this point. And if it's not, definitely watch the first video again before you continue on with this one. But if that is clear for you guys, in principle, then I'd like to get into our outline and kick it off here with pot manipulation strategies. 
you have of course all the different moves open to you that we explained in the first video but this video is of course you know how to manipulate that pot post flop especially um, given your holding what you flop what you turn how the river looks and your respective opponents and table dynamics and history that being said I think we should get into what I've coined here the pot principle illustrating the odds that you're giving your opponents when you make pot size bets and I've added a point here I've called or I've termed three timing so when in doubt three time it that means three time the previous bet three time um, the previous call whatever and you'll be very very close to this pot principle we've got here again our NL 100 let's say we're playing pot limit Omaha for a hundred maximum buy-in of a hundred big blinds so PLO 100 when a lot of you guys think pot size raises you're probably thinking you just bet the amount that's in the pot at that point and sometimes that will be correct especially post flop of course if you're the first to act you make a pot size bet there's ten in the middle you just bet ten that's of course clear but if there is action before you on any given any given sh uh, street also preflop you are not betting the amount that's in the middle you're following this principle here pot total pot at the current moment plus two times the amount for you to call that's very very important so if we're gonna make a pot size bet here okay we've got the small blind post big blind post how much would we actually make as an open raise as a two bet i.e. the first raise preflop in a pot limit Omaha scenario if you're saying 150 you're of course completely wrong <laughs> because it is twice the amount to call namely two plus 150 for a total of 350 good and what does that mean this idea of a pot, pot size raise, say, is that you're giving the player before you two to one odds, namely he has to break even one time in three, he needs to have 33.33% equity in order to make that call and break even in the long run, just based on pot odds alone. That's the idea of a pot size raise. It's not that you bet the amount in the pot necessarily, it's that you're giving the player before you exactly two to one odds and that you're not going to get with a so-called bet such as just betting the pot he here only needs fourteen point three percent to make that same call so again three fifty twice the amount to call plus the current pot size gives the opponent before you thirty three percent pot I'd say exactly two to one so one time in three he needs to hit in order to break even in the long run. So let's say you raise it up, open raise, pot limit Omaha to 350, and the next guy's on. So what's his pot size raise amount? Without a cold collar here, we'll just keep it simple. Well, it is, I'll just have another dramatic pause for you guys to add that up. What's the current pot size? Don't look at that. <laughs> okay, so five five big blinds in NL100 or PLO100 of course the big blind is exactly um, the monetary amount so five dollars if you're playing in US dollars and our re-raise amount would be twice the amount to call seven plus five twelve giving the open raiser how much good thirty three percent to make that three bet call two to one odds I'm giving this player he needs 33.33 percent equity if he were to go all in to make that call that's the idea so let's say there's a guy behind us who really likes his double suited ace jack ten hand <laughs> as he should and he decides good we're not gonna be three betting here gentlemen we're going to be four betting of course 
and that's going to be how much for him to make a pot size re-raise, i.e. 4-bet preflop. Well, total pot, as you see here, is 17, plus twice the amount to call is 24. Here we go. 41. Now, if he's with a 100 big blind stack, let's assume that everybody does have a 100 big blind stack here. He, as opposed to no limit Omaha, he can't push right here for his full stack. The maximum amount that he can bet is capped at 41 big blinds. And that's, that's as high as he can go in so-called pot limit games. That would apply also if you're playing, let's say, five card draw or even seven cards, yeah, seven card stud somewhere for pot limit that, that also exists, uh, not necessarily online, but definitely live, uh, house games, etc. And yeah, this principle would then apply to all those different pot limit games, not just pot limit Omaha as such. So the next guy here, he's got um, double suited ace. Aces and kings, <laughs> highly unlikely. See, that's how this guy in our scenario had uh, a pair of aces and the jack ten double suited, but whatever. And he also likes his hand for a five bet, <laughs> and so he then pops it to what? So twice the bet, the previous bet, eighty two, plus a total pot size of fifty eight, hundred and forty. So he could only bet. 100, of course, if they're all on effective 100 big blind stacks, but especially live. Um, when playing pot limit Omaha, there's very often yeah, either no cap or a very limited cap on your total stack size uh, permitted at any given table. So you're very often, in, especially pot limit Omaha games, going to be very deep stacked, and your opponents will also be deep stacked. Just keep in mind that you're always limited by the effective stack at your table or whatever the effective stack is in any given hand you're involved in. And in this case, of course, 140 would be the textbook pot limit raise amount if you are deep stacked and had, of course, 140 left in your stack. Good, so what does that do? Well, it gives this guy, exactly imagine that, 33% to make that 5-bit call if these guys fold down. And that's pretty much the principle here, guys. 